Good morning. I wanted to bring you a short reading and thought and prayer for today, the Wednesday after Easter. I'm going to read to you from John chapter 20, verse 11 and onwards. The, the setting here is it's still uh, the morning of the Sunday, Easter day. Mary and Peter and the nameless other disciple, the one Jesus loved, who most people agree is John himself, have arrived at the tomb. They have found it empty, the stone rolled away. Peter and John go into the tomb. They see the strips of linen lying there. And they recorded as believing, but didn't quite understand what was happening. And they then go back to where they're staying. But Mary stays. She stays at the tomb of Jesus. And that's where we pick it up in verse 11 of John chapter 20. I'm reading from the message. But Mary stood outside the tomb weeping. As she wept, she knelt to look into the tomb and saw two angels sitting there dressed in white, one at the head, the other at the foot where Jesus' body had been laid. They said to her, Woman, why do you weep? They took my master, she said, and I don't know where they put him. After she said this, she turned away and saw Jesus standing there. But she didn't recognise him. Jesus spoke to her. Woman, why do you weep? Who are you looking for? She, thinking that he was the gardener, said, Mister, if you took him, tell me where you put him so I can care for him. Jesus said, Mary. Turning to face him, she said in Hebrew, Rabbanai meaning teacher. Jesus said, don't cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go to my brothers and tell them, I ascend to my Father and your Father, my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went, telling the news to the disciples. I saw the Master, and she told them everything he said to her. I've been very struck once again by this short passage in the last few days. And it's a passage I've stayed with and tried to allow it to settle in my mind. It's always a powerful account whenever we read it, but it, something about it struck me afresh this year. Of course, we know of Mary's faithfulness to Jesus. She is there weeping and wondering what has happened. And even when she expects him to be dead, to be caring for a dead body, she is still looking for Jesus. And even before she knows who this mysterious figure in the garden is, who, who she thinks or assumes is a gardener, Jesus, as he has done so often throughout his three years or so of ministry on earth, draws her motivations out of her. She wants to meet with Jesus. She wants to see him. She thinks Jesus is dead. She doesn't know the truth, but she's still seeking Jesus. Mary is someone who stays with Jesus whatever happens, with no agenda, seemingly with no expectations. Now, in any relationship, expectations can be dangerous. We, we all have expectations. But if those expectations aren't met by a person or a group of people, or maybe even an institution, it can be very 
painful for us. And it becomes even more painful if those expectations are buried deep within us or they are unacknowledged and unvoiced. And Jesus here draws Mary's expectations out of her, such as they are, just to meet with Jesus, even though she knows or assumes that he's dead. Somehow, this little passage this week has reminded me of Job. Like Mary, he is in a moment throughout his book of deep crisis. And his expectations are drawn out of him. And like Mary, in reality, he has very few expectations. And these, this lack of expectations confounds his friends. Despite everything that happens to Job, he says, yet though he slay me, I'll trust in him. No matter what happens, I'll trust God. And God, throughout that book, gives Job permission to voice his concerns and his questions. But he doesn't answer them. He just shows himself to Job, meets with him. Which is ultimately what happens to Mary. She has few expectations. She doesn't get any answers about what's happened, but she does meet with Jesus in a way that transcends her expectations, exceeds them in ways she hadn't even considered were possible. I wonder what my and our expectations of God, of Jesus, are at this time. Our expectations can be influenced by preaching we've heard, books we've read, what's been said to us, our families of origin, our cultures, whatever. So many things can influence the expectations we have of ourselves and of others and of, particularly of God. But what we see in Mary looking into the tomb and weeping outside the tomb, what we see in Job is freedom from expectations, a desire to meet with God, whatever it costs or whatever they experience. You and I have permission to express to God our doubts and our fears and our questions, and I hope we've all been trying to do that in the ways that we can over the last few weeks, and we'll continue to do so. And that is part of building our relationship with God, to ask our questions. But as we do so, we find that so rarely are questions answered by God, so rarely are reasons given. What we find instead is that instead of providing a clear answer, Jesus simply promises to draw close to us. As we draw close to him, he comes close to us. What we re receive is not knowledge, but relationship. And relationship is what we crave most. And relationship is ultimately what will keep us going and will move us forward will sustain us. So St. Peter's, may you, may I, may we be those who seek Jesus, whatever the situation, whatever the cost, may we be those who present to Jesus our questions and our worries and see him draw close to us as we draw close to him.